So welcome to Purely Mental with Jim Carroll. My name is Dave Wheeler, alongside the man, the legend, the myth, Jim Carroll. How are you doing this evening? Doing fantastic. How about you, Dave? I'm living the dream, as I always say. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of fun here. So for those wondering, what is Purely Mental? Jim, I think you're the best one to answer that question. How can we describe to listeners what's Purely Mental? Well, geez, you know, I've been a mentalist now for 35 years and uh, traveling around the country originally doing college entertainment, doing the mind reading show and mental show. And then I started traveling around the world with the USO, going to Afghanistan, Qatar, Turkey, Germany. And what happened was I, I stumbled upon some interesting things. Like like people from time to time ask me, hey, is what you're doing a trick? Is what, and I, I would say, no, it's purely mental, meaning it's real. Because I established, I, I got this memory that I don't even know where it comes from. I mean, learning all the zip codes, 80,000 zip codes, seven, about 70,000 digits of pi, all this stuff. Where did it come from? And, 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 uh, and throughout the show, Purely Mental, what we're going to, like a lot of the celebrities I met over the years and stuff like that, we'll have them on as guests and doctors. I know about probably 100 doctors right now, top psychologists, neuropsychologists, we'll have them on because I want to find out myself what Purely Mental is. Like, where do these abilities come from? I mean, when I first started as a magician many, many years ago, I worked in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I worked in a steel mill. And when I got laid off, like the Billy Joe song, Living Here in Allentown, all right, that was like me, all right? I got laid off. I didn't know what to do with my life. I could do a couple card tricks back then. So I, my wife was pregnant. I took her Avon account, went door to door selling Avon. Look what I look like. I'm 6'3", I was going to say, they must be the greatest uh, Avon door person <laughs> yeah. ever. So, hey, would you like to yeah, buy some Avon? Right. I became like the biggest selling Avon guy, probably the only guy, all right? <laughs> and then they, they asked me to do a show for a 1,000 women, and they had these big cameras and to see my card tricks. And then here I am, 3,500 shows later. The, the Avon thing really took off. And so that's how it all started. It went from going from steel worker to a magician, all right? And then what happened was I became this guy like a mentalist, like a, like the amazing Kreskin, a mm-hmm. person that appears to be able to read minds and things like that. So that's how it all started, all right? And then what happened is in 1990, here's where the purely mental really starts. In 1990, I'm sleeping, all right, and the phone rings, all right? I'm like, hello, all right? And all of a sudden, the voice on the other end goes, Jim, you were right. The Pennsylvania Daily number was 222 on December 22nd. I'm like... And I, all of a sudden, I, I'm holding nothing in my hand. I, it was a dream. But it was so vivid that I wrote it down. 222, Pennsylvania Daily Number, December 22nd. Went to the, went to the t- toilet and went back to sleep. Woke up in the morning. I was in a rush. It's, I had no indication of the dream whatsoever. My wife's making the bed. She goes, what's this? I go, what? She shows me this note. 222, all of a sudden, the dream clicked. So I would go to my shows, every show. Play 222, December, because it was November 8th I had the dream. Play 222, December 20th. Play two, I swear, I must have at least 32 shows. December 22nd comes. I run out to buy my two cantaloupes for my show. There's the people out there that know me that know what the cantaloupe trick is. All right? And there were 75 people standing in line to play this number, so I couldn't play the number. I'm like, ah, oh. so I didn't get to play it. So I rushed the show, get home to put on Action News down in the Philly area, and I walked past my voicemail machine, and a light was blinking. And being a magician back then, well, that means shows, potential <laughs> shows. So I hit the button. It goes, you have 67 messages in your mailbox. I'm like, wow, usually six or seven, never 67. And as I'm playing the messages, it's a true story, the third message, the voice goes, Jim, you were right. The Pennsylvania Daily Number was 222. Same voices in the dream. That freaked me the heck out. It was the same voices in the dream, and it ended up being a guy named Ken Hans. He was the fire chief at Lehigh Township Fire Department, mm-hmm. where I did the show for a holiday party, and they, they ended up winning $75,000 just amongst the firemen there. It was like, I think they bought a new truck. So I got them in the National Enquirer story with me and everything else, and that's where the career took off. Now, how the heck did that happen? What is that? And that put me on this mission since 1990 till today in search of the real deal stuff. Not No BS, no fake stuff, not just magic. What is real? There's something real going on out here in the world. And it happened as my dream. I mean, that that was a dream, and it came up. And and I think what was, oh, $13 million was won that night in the Pennsylvania Daily Number, and the average payout was like $1.1 $1. $1 a night. 
They even changed daily number laws in, in Pennsylvania. In fact, if you go right now, LotteryUSA.com, today, 20, how many, what is it, 1999, 27 years later, mm-hmm. you'll see, you click, go to LotteryUSA, see the lottery results for Pennsylvania, click down History of Pennsylvania Lottery, and you'll see the story. It's true. This is not a, so this is what purely mental means to me. I'm in search of the real deal. What is real out here? How hard were you kicking yourself the next day that you didn't buy a ticket? You were there in line, <laughs> and you didn't buy yeah. the Ticket. Well, 75 people. See, if I didn't have that show, I would have waited for the 75 people. And I found out later those 75 people were actually playing 2 2 2 that night. That was so bizarre. Yeah. I mean, I got so much mail from that, so many hugs and kisses and everything else. But you know what? Something bad happened from that. Uh, I did get in a National Enquirer. So 23 million readers throughout the world knew that story. And I started getting phone calls. From people, hey, please give me the numbers. I'm dying. I want to leave my grand. I felt so bad because I couldn't give these numbers out, and I wish I could. I, I'm not superhuman, you know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. It was that one dream I had, but this one guy kept calling me, calling me every night. Give me the lot of numbers for California. Give me the, there's thirty million dollars. I'll split it with you. I'm a Vietnam vet. Blah, blah, blah. And this guy kept calling me every night. All right, one night he calls me at one o'clock in the morning, and I go, hello, and, and the guy goes, hey, dude, where do? <laughs> I said, buddy, don't call me anymore. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. No, it's not. It's 10 o'clock. I hung up. A minute later, he calls me back, Dave, right? He calls me back. He goes, dude, you don't get it, do you? I want those numbers right now. I know where you live. I know you have four little kids. And that's what drove me out of Pennsylvania. I got out of Pennsylvania. I was in fear of my kids, Mm -hmm. right? So, but now I'm coming back out. But that's how it all started. And that's why I'm in search of what happened that night in that dream. Why did that dream come to me? Where did it come from? It was real. I mean, you hear magicians say, he predicts lotteries, that magician. I'm not going to mention that. No, this was real. I predicted a a lottery. Where did that come from, Dave? And that's what we're in search of with this podcast. That's what we're in search of right now. We want to find this out. And you've been doing a lot with the USO recently. I mean, you've been all over the world. Uh, probably this past week, I'm sure you were in Germany. You were here. Yeah, you were that? there. And now you're back here. So. I know. I'm like, I like. I never. Hey, the thing is, before that lottery prediction, I was never in an airplane. <laughs> all right, that was, that was really bizarre. And since that time, that's all I do now is travel. Now with the USO, I'm going overseas. Like we were in Afghanistan. We were in Qatar. In fact, the, we flew 26,000 miles completely around around the world we left washington dc flew out west to hawaii then from hawaii we, we went to guam then we went to to south of china then the diego garcia i never even heard of that place it's in the south i couldn't even tell you what that is i don't think i've ever heard of that <laughs> it's either. an air force base like it's a base in the south uh, indian ocean between africa and australia i'm like what am i doing this is amazing then from there we i, I ended up on an aircraft carrier getting catapult it off you know you boy try that sometime so yeah that's what i did we traveled completely around the world we ended up in germany and then we, we came across the atlantic into dc so it's a lot of fun i've done it a few times now and and i'm going to be doing it again this season coming up but the main thing is this purely mental now that i travel around the world i'm kind of in search of it. it's like a passion of mine it's, mm. it's, it's driving me crazy i have to find out are there other people that experience this out there there's something real out there, something universal that comes into your brain at night. And what it did, it, 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 I, I used to work in a steel mill. And now I hang out with people from MIT and all this other thing, the top people, because what it, it, somehow it motivated me to study the human brain and to memorize things and everything. I mean, I'd be sitting on my exercise bike, pedaling away, pedaling away, looking at flashcards, memorizing zip codes. Who sits there and memorizes zip codes? It's like really crazy. It's like... And, and, and the more I push my brain every single day, the stronger and stronger it get, got and the stronger the dreams became. So there's something out here, and I like to call it purely mental, it's in each and every, I think our, our, each of us have a brain. Everybody out here could do this. That's what's really cool about this, and that's what I want to encourage everybody. You can all do what I did. It's just amazing. In fact, if anybody out there listening has a real story, send it to us. I'd like to hear about this. I want to be like the gatekeeper to this. I know from 35 years of practice what is real in mentalism and magic and what's not. And I'm looking for the real thing because that dream was real. And since then, a lot of stuff has happened. We'll get into that throughout the, the shows here, but 
That's what purely mental is. And the beautiful thing is you're you're going to teach people. You're going to teach our audience how to do this versus, you know, other people don't want to ever open up that curtain and see the man behind the curtain. You want to show people that anyone can do this. Definitely, definitely. And, and throughout the throughout the whole, all the broadcasts, they'll just be able to go to jimcarroll.com and after every broadcast and ask questions and we'll, the next broadcast will answer their questions. We'll teach them how to do a lot of this stuff. And, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun here. And everybody's been telling me for, for I don't know how many months now, you should do your own thing. You should do your own thing. So here we are. We're doing it, <laughs> folks. All you veterans out there, all you tens of thousands of college students that have seen me over the years as the psychic madman, well, now we're doing it. All right, Professor Jim, then, if you're going to teach us, <laughs> let's let's start from the basics. So, you know, I, I want to go home tonight. I want to start memorizing st- the zip codes. So let's start with, like, New York, for instance. You know, I know the local ones here, but I couldn't tell you remotely what Albany zip code is. What's Albany zip code? Schenectady, if you know that. Well, Schenectady is 12301, the 12399. So, that, so that's an easy one because there actually is a, a zip code in Schenectady, 12345, which happens to be General Electric. That's zip the code. Santa Claus zip yeah, code. Yeah. That's a famous. Yeah, it's zip amazing. Code. And here's an, here, you think that's stuff. You should see. See, once you get into this, it's just so much fun, and it keeps going. It's gone. Mm. See, the whole idea of of pushing your brain to memorize things, you have to make it exciting. You can't, it can't be a chore. It can't be you're going to go, ah, oh, don't I got to memorize all this crap? If you think like that and have that negative attitude. Whew, you're done. It's not going to happen. You got to be positive, and that's what I do. I like when I help these wounded warriors with PTSD down mm. in DC and Walter Reed and stuff like that. I install this positive attitude. Posit- I make it fun. I make it that you want to learn this stuff. I make it rewarding. Like I had this one boy. He came. I'm not going to mention names or anything. He came in. He has he, Mr. Carroll. He goes. My doctor says there's no hope for my memory, and he has severe PTSD, TBI, traumatic brain injury, stuff like that. I said, don't worry about it. Just come out to the course. I'll teach you. Don't worry about it. He comes to the course. Now, his doctors, first of all, should never, that's negative. Never tell somebody there's no hope for your memory. What? <laughs> that's defeating. You know, I'm the complete opposite. I'm like, no, I'll teach you. I can teach a dog how to memorize. Come on down. We'll yeah, show you yeah. what you got. So he comes out, and the first thing I did was taught him a bunch of celebrities' names, because that's how I began. I began by learning a, a bunch of celebrities' names. When I started doing this, uh, I won't mention right now the reason why I started doing the memory, but there was a health reason I had, and I had to do an exercise bike. And in order to do the exercise bike and not be bored, I started memorizing things on flat. And that's how this all, all started. We'll get into that another time. But to make a long story short, I started with these, this list of celebrities. And at that time, the top 100 people in magazine in People magazine were like Brad Pitt, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan. This and that. So I took all these celebrities and put them in a numerical order from 1 to 100. Like Michael Jordan's number 23. So he was number 23 on my list. Brad Pitt was number two. Brad Pitt, two syllables, two T's and Pitt. B for Brad, the second letter in the alphabet. See, so this is what I did. I created this system. And this is what I teach these warriors and, and athletes that are suffering from CTE and stuff like that. And so what happens is after they learn the system of the, of, of the celebrities, then we insert other information like states, capitals, stuff like that. Like the first 13 states of the union, this boy had to learn by the next time he came. Now, he had severe TBI and everything. Mm-hmm. So and it's only an hour and 15 minute course. So I teach him. He comes back the following week and there were about 17 people in the class. Who wants to go first? And he raises his hand. I'm like, wow. Okay. He goes, okay, give me the first 13 states of the union. Now, 90% of the people listening out here probably don't know the first 13 states of the union. Uh, New York, uh, <laughs> Delaware. Yeah, but what number you know, was New York? Two. Actually, it was 11. Oh. And nobody out here listening, anybody out here listening, everybody out here listening right now will never forget this. Here's how you remember New York's the 11th state in the union. Twin Towers, two towers, looks like an 11, all right? 11. September 11th, New York is the 11th state of the union. So what I do is I create all this stuff and put it in there, and he comes out, and he's there. All right, go ahead. You can go first. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia. He was going slow, but he did all 13. So my reward to him was I was going to teach him how to count cards because who doesn't want to learn how to count cards? I mean, that was right? literally where I was about to go with this. That's the next <laughs> yeah. question. So. Well, he was the first one I taught. So I'm teaching him how to count cards. Once again, I taught him a basic system where you shuffle a deck, give the person the deck of cards with one card missing, all right? So he has, I have a stopwatch. He has one minute to look through the deck to determine what that card is that I pulled out. So he's looking through the deck, looking through the deck. 45 seconds later, he goes, I'm done. I'm like, what? 
I go, well, what's the card? He goes, it's a two of heart. It's a two of heart. I gave him a big hug. I mean, here's a guy that just two weeks before this, his doctor said there's no hope for his memory. That's a bunch of baloney, all right? It's, anything is possible. If you put your mind to it, it's got to be positive, positive, positive. It's just amazing how this works. So other than that and other than doing, you know, tricks, you've been on Howard Stern, you've been on Ellen, you've been on the Today Show. You have some Guinness Book of World Records. What's, what records do you have? Well, I, have a couple, I have a couple records. I had the, I had the uh, card-throwing record. I, I remember when I worked at the steel mill, me and a guy named Harry Gass, we used to try to throw cards across the other end of the mill. It was 200 feet away, and we'd be hitting the wall, both of us. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? Right? Somebody goes up to me one time, they go, you know, there's a Guinness record for this. I go, really? I go, what's the record? They go, 155 feet. I go, what? That's impossible. We're throwing them 200 easily, right? So one day I'm at a college, uh, I believe it was Mount Ida College in Massachusetts. They, they asked me to try for the record, so we did. So I had to get Guinness people involved, the media people from the Boston area. And, and here, sure enough, I take cards and... They may, wanted to make sure they're regular cards. They hand you the cards, make sure there's no weights inside. <laughs> Glow and, or and anything I, crazy I thought, on them. Yeah. And I believe it was the third card, Dave. It went, whoosh, beautiful throw. I mean, it just went. No wind, no nothing. It's just cut beautiful. I, I remember like it was yesterday, and it hit some freaking big statue, all right? And it hit like like up, up, up around the chest area of the statue. The statue must have been really big. I'm like, wow. So they went and they measured it from where I threw it to to the base of the statue was 201 feet. And that's what they marked the record as. But if it wasn't for that statue, that car probably would have went 240 feet. And then this guy that ended up beating me, Rick Smith Jr., probably would not have never bet me because I think his record only beat me by 10 feet. So there's only two of us that ever threw a car 200 feet. But I'm still, I'm back in shape again. I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s now, but, you know, I'm, I'm getting them up to 200 feet again. So the cards are going between 150, 200 feet. So I'll be back. You know, I know someone uh, who I work with here. You did a show years ago, and he said he ran the sound for the backstage. You know, he ran your sound and this, that, and the other thing, and you did the the throw in the cards, and you're like, you told the students, you watch this, this card's going to sit here for years. Yeah. And uh, his name is Chris, and he's like, yeah, you know, we'll get it down eventually. And he goes, it sat up there. He worked there for another three or four years, and it's still, it probably still sitting up there because they had no idea how it stuck up yeah, there, how fast you that. threw it. I hear that all stuff. the time. Hundreds of colleges across the country right now have an ace of clubs or a two of clubs stuck on the ceiling those are the two cards my favorite cards that i would use to do it and it's just crazy i mean it's and then other magicians started doing that and everything else and you know but i i was like the guy that that was like one of my trademarks <laughs> throw the cards up in the air <laughs> stick it on the ceiling because i would throw cards in my show you know i'd have people standing like one end of the stage i'd be on the other end like back in the day when people smoked a lot mm. and stuff like that they don't anymore the guy would have a cigarette in his mouth, and I would throw a card about 25 feet away and knock the cigarette out of his mouth. And <laughs> so I incorporated the card throwing in the show for the longest time. And But then I got a little older, and it was more like, you know, like an athlete, an aging athlete. Man, you know, you, you can't throw that fastball anymore. Your arm gets too sore, you know. You go you from know. the Yankees, yeah. you're going to the Mets, yeah. and now you're like, I don't know, yeah. I'm on the bench right now. But now know. I'm back, man. Ever since the age, of, ever since I hit 60, started working out like a maniac, lifting weights again. And, and sure enough, the card throwing is back. It's amazing. It's just, I mean, from, from like 100 feet, 110 feet just two years ago, I, I quickly put on 60, 70 feet on my throw. It's just amazing. So I'll be back. Beautiful. And yeah. other, other than the card throwing, what other records do you have? I had a record that, that had the Guinness Book. I, I traveled around the country with Guinness, okay, back in 1999 to promote their Millennium Edition book, mm. the Silver Book. 2000 book. Oh, that was the big it, one. Oh, that was, I remember being in Los Angeles with, this, with Matt. I don't want to go into the last names. He passed away. Poor Matt. This Matt was about seven feet, eight inches tall. He graduated from Westchester. I, I remember just like it was just a, I thought I had big feet, size 15. Matt had like 33. He had his, <laughs> his Guinness record was the world's biggest feet at the time. And Matt had some kind of it, disease where he's mm. hunched over. Like he, even when he's hunched over, he was seven foot tall. Like when I'd walk behind him, my head's looking at his butt. I mean, and I'm 6'3". Mm -hmm. I mean, me and Matt, we really hit it off out there, and, and we would go to all these shows, the Guinness shows, and promote the book, and that was so much fun. Then I met other Guinness acts. So what it did was Guinness, I set a record for Guinness that they put in their archives that they didn't, that nobody could try to beat, where I already started doing the memory techniques back mm -hmm. then a little bit, nothing to where I'm at today. And I, I don't remember what that record was because that's back, at, that's 17 years ago. I believe it was, like, here, Dave, you could take this deck of cards, and I would give... 15 people, I believe it was, I gave 15 people a deck of cards. Each one would take a card out of the deck, mm. shuffle them up. 
I would take each deck one at a time, look through the cards very quickly. You have a five of hearts. You have a ten of diamonds. You have a jack of spades. And I would know all the cards by looking through the mm. deck to see what's missing. But now, with the new memory techniques that I've developed, I could smother that record. So I may <laughs> come out and do that record again and maybe even do it up here to create some publicity for somebody in the upstate New York area. That would be really cool. Or anywhere in the country, for that matter. Mm -hmm. So to get just that record alone, or, or could you imagine somebody parking a Hummer or a BMW Z3 or something like that, Z4 I think they are now, and you roll the window down, and I stand there from 50 feet away and pew, 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 throwing cards in the window. Hey, if you could do this, you win the vehicle. So I can mm -hmm. do contests like that. So I, I want to revive this whole career again, you know what I mean? You know, and let, let's see what happens. Going back to counting cards, if, you know, you're looking <laughs> to make money. Because you had a, you, you've told the story in the past, but obviously listeners haven't heard it. Uh, you're banned from casinos. You literally can't play on a gaming floor because you, you know things. So, like, it, you go to a roulette table, what makes you pick the numbers that you're there? Well, now, roulette, roulette look at blackjack, it's justified to be banned from that. Because <laughs> I can sense. count cards. Yeah. But roulette, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it makes me feel like I'm some kind of, yeah. First of all, let me tell you what happened. I, I'll i mention the casino. It was in Borgata in Atlantic City. All right? I'm down there performing a show, 900 people. And afterwards, I come out, and everybody goes, let's follow that mentalist around. All right? So everybody's following me around, right? I sat, so I sat at a roulette table. First of all, I like roulette, but I'm not a roulette player. I mean, I couldn't. I, I'm not a gambler. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a gambler. I'm just a fun guy. All right? So I sit at a roulette table, and I put a chip down on number 11 black. I mean, I remember this like it's yesterday. All right, all of a sudden, boom, 11 black comes up. I'm like, wow. And everybody's here, dang, I should have played that number. I knew I should have played that. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I took twice as many or three times as many chips, and I put them on number eight black. Because I was thinking like eight ball, pool table. I don't know why. It just came You're to just my coming mind. up with these. So it wasn't like you, like you predicted no, them. You no, strategy, no strategy, no prediction. It was just at the moment what was happening, mm. right? A couple of people played eight black. All of a sudden, now I'm looking at the lady as that, that little loose sight marker, and I'm visualizing it going on top of that pile, all right? And all of a sudden, it's there. She put the, I'm like, wow, I didn't even hear the number. I didn't even hear anybody say eight black. It was like so real. I'm like, so now, as you can see, I have red sneakers every day, all right? And that, that day I had Michael Jordan, number 23 on. So I go, 23 red, gotta be the next number. It gotta be, right? So I put table, I asked what table max was. I put table max. This is a true story, man. On 23 red. All of a sudden, now when I look around, there's like 20, 30 people around the table now playing my numbers. I was going to say, if they're not playing those numbers yeah. at that point, then it there's was, a problem. Hey, it was, like a, it was like, let me tell you what's happening. So this pile is like, I swear, it was over a foot high, wobbling like this. And everybody's there, go, go, go. And all of a sudden, when 23 red came up, first of all, I thought I was going to, my heart's pounding like, I'm like, I can't, I was more happy that all these people won that money, <laughs> not real, I, realizing what I just won even, right? And all of a sudden they asked me, could, Mr. Carroll, could you come with us, right? I'm like, everybody, I was like, it was like creating a scene. Everybody's like, you can't do that. He's our good luck charm. <laughs> they take me to this room, right? And I'm thinking, oh, and he's checking, do you have any electronic gimmick, gimmicks or anything? I'm, no, I just willed the number to happen. And he didn't have a sense of humor. I go, look, at, I just did a comedy show in there. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm having, you didn't do a show. I, I did a show here. He calls the guy down that hired me for the show. So he kind of like bailed me out kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah, Jimmy Carroll, Jimmy Carroll. Show him what you do with a deck of cards. And that's when I pulled my deck of cards out, let him shuffle them, and I memorized the whole deck. That was it. He goes, you're banned from here. Like, <laughs> I'm like, really? I go, that would be cool to be banned from here. I go, Because, you know, thinking at the time, you know, hey, wow, I have a reputation. I'm banned from the Brigada. I go, I wish I was banned from every casino, you know, in the Atlantic City area. He goes, I can make that happen as of next week. So what started off as a joke, it started off as a joke and, and not knowing that one day I'm asked to do a show down in Florida at the, at the whole, the hard rock casino down there. And, uh, and you know, outside of uh, Fort Lauderdale up there, Hollywood, Florida, mm -hmm. I think it is. Yeah. The zip code is three, three, I forget. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, I get a call. This is for the Super Bowl. I get a call five days before the event. I was a fundraiser for a major celebrity, a blackjack fundraiser. Uh, Jim, we're really sorry. We can't have you at the fundraiser. I'm like, what? I go, you, I go, no, no, no. We're still going to pay you and you still come down here, but we can't allow you on the casino floor. I'm like, what? And that's when I found out what started as a joke spread across various, I don't know how many casinos that know about this, but 
You know, maybe none of them. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it's a joke. Maybe people are pulling a prank on me. But it's a lot of fun. And you can see, you know me, I'm, I'm just about having a blast here with this stuff. So now I feel like teaching a lot of people how to do this, count the cards. Because I'm like a little angry that, because I don't even gamble. That's what's really weird about this. <laughs> yeah, you would think that. You no. have all the ability to make millions of dollars. You could go <laughs> any any blackjack table in the world, believe probably not, know everything that's in the deck. Believe it or not, I don't even like blackjack. I like poker. I like playing poker. I mean, I, I mean, on, on one of these upcoming shows, I think we're going to, we're going to bring a couple poke. I have a lot of uh, friends that are poker pros and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think we'll bring them in here. We'll put about four of them in here. We'll play with their minds a little bit and just hearing their reaction. Oh my God. <laughs> and that's what I love doing. I just love pranking people, having fun with people. And, but at the same time, I want to know where the real stuff comes from. What is that? How many other people have that? I mean, I hear stories. Like I, I did some research. There's supposed to be some lady in the Ukraine or something like that. She's 90 years old. All right? She's about 95 pounds. This is a true story. She's 90 years old, and she could take a frying pan and bend it in her bare hands. Now, these are the people that I want to see. These are the people I want to research. I want To me, that's purely mental. How the heck does a 90-year-old grandmother not even 100 pounds soaking wet, bend a frying pan in her hand. This is the stuff that I want to discover, and that's why I want to do this show. All right? I think this is a start to finding this out across the world. So let's let's try to stump you on some zip codes. Are you ready for that? Oh, so, man, you're amazing. You have that skill, right? You can memorize. I just tell you a number, and you got yeah, it. Yeah, but I have about an 80 85% chance that I'd know the zip code, yeah. All right, so there's no there's no, uh, trickery no, no, here. No, here's why. When coast to coast, George Norrie, great mm-hmm. friend of mine, I would do this with George's show five five or six times we did this. I've been a guest on there a dozen times. And he'd always ask me. And then so one day he had this television show called Beyond Belief. Mm-hmm. All right? I'm sure you heard that. Oh, yeah. And so I flew, I flew out to Colorado and did the show in person. And he's doing zip codes to me. And when I started guessing the zip codes, he goes, oh, man, you really do to him. Well, of course I do. What did you think I was doing? He goes, well, you could have been looking at a computer. Or something. Googling on, something yeah, in the yeah, background. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of what I did. A lot of fun with the zips. Oh, you, got, you got one? Go ahead. I got a few here. Let's yeah. see. I just randomly typed in a All few right, different states in Google. So let's see what you got. So I, I just have to give you the number, right? Yeah, That's yeah, it? the number, yeah. All right, so here we go. Yeah. 85901. 85901. Yeah, because if you do it the other way around, all right, it could be, like, if you give me, say, say for example, you say, hey, what, what's the zip code for L.A.? Mm. But it's like 214, or New York is 300. Yeah. So that's why you do it by number. Is that in Arizona, like a, like a, a, a little town called Sholo or something like that? Sholo, Arizona, 85901. You're pretty close. Yeah, I think yeah. that's it. And it might be how you pronounce it. I have no idea how to pronounce well, why, it. What do you have there? Well, you, you <laughs> N-A- it. N-A-V-A-J-O? And, no, it's, it's Sholo, S-H-O-W-L-O-W. Seriously, Sholo, Arizona. <laughs> See that? Look at that. That's what's really cool about this thing. When, it get, when you do this, I, there's zip codes that, that they don't even have right on a computer. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. you know what? You just stump that. So here's another Like one. if anybody's listening to this show right now from Sholo, they know I'm right. Yeah, they're yeah. like, no, this guy's wrong with the computer. No, I'm trusting no, no, Jim. No. So, so here's another one. Yeah. 40447. 40447. I know that I instantly put you in Kentucky. Is it? Is it McKee? McKee, McKee Kentucky? Oh, this one said, yeah, yeah, McKee, M- Kentucky. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look I'm, at that. Of course I'm right. What the hell? You know what? Okay, so here's it. Here we go. Purely mental. This guy's an yeah, idiot. Yeah. I'm looking at the county. When I said oh, the county, you no. totally had Sholo, Arizona, right? Yeah. What an idiot I am. So, so it was Sholo, right? So you <laughs> you thought you were looking at a county. I was like, oh, I got him. I yeah, got him. No, no, no. This is what's cool about this. Yeah, so I was totally thrown off. Well, it's up. the same way with the dates. People go, hey, wh- wh- I go, what's your birth date? April 10th, 1953. You were born on a Friday. And then one day I'm doing, doing this at a show to a girl at a college in front of about 800 people, right? And she's like, and she gives me her birth date. I go, that was a Thursday. She goes, no, you're wrong. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> and I go, it's a Thursday. I go, what, what is it again? I go, no, it's a Thursday. Then she goes, no, it's a Tuesday. I go, what do you mean? She goes, my mom said it's a Tuesday. I go, call your mom up right now. <laughs> she calls her mom up, <laughs> puts her on speakerphone in front of the whole college. And I go, hey, mom, how you doing? I go, what, 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 what's, uh, what day of the week was Judy, Judy born on? Uh, she goes, it's a Thursday, right? I go, no, it's a Tuesday. She goes, you're telling me? She goes, I should know. I, I delivered. And I go, I go, I swear I will give you my paycheck tonight if you're right. And so somebody brought a phone and they Googled it and it was a Tuesday. Then the mom goes, 
Oh, that's your brother. He was the th- <laughs> So that's what's really cool about this. I have so much fun with this stuff. It's just crazy. I just feel like a complete idiot. I'm sitting here looking at this, and I didn't even see it said county, and you nailed it. Like, yeah, I feel yeah, embarrassed yeah. that you completely nailed it. Then you, And let's do one more. Just yeah. What's, uh, All right, one more. One yeah. more. We'll give it a shot. Yeah. 76101. 76101. I know that's in Texas. Is that that's right around a Dallas area? Is it Fort Worth? Fort, Fort Worth. Worth nailed Fort it. Worth. Yeah, yeah, nailed it completely. That's how so, I didn't look at the county. We yeah. got it good. But here's what's cool about this: <laughs> anybody, anybody in this listening audience, Dave, can learn how to do this. How? How do you? How do well, you? Well, that's do what it? we're going to do. We're going to teach everybody this. I mean, I just came out with a program called Jim Carroll's Master Memory Course with mm-hmm. Dr. Daniel Amen, all right, on L.A., uh, the California area. So what I want to do now is just create this big thing across where I teach people how to do things. You know, not necessarily over the air, but we talk about it over the air. And then when they go to the to the site, jimcarroll.com, I will teach them how to do a lot of these things. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially something like that. Or the day for the date thing. Like, give me a date, any any date. Like, what, what's your birthday? October 24th, 1990. October. That was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday. Isn't that cool? Yeah. <laughs> and it's instant like that. All right. And uh, this started from a guy locally up here, too. Uh, I think his name was Scott Flansberg, the human calculator. Mm. I mean, before I did this memory stuff, you know, like this, to this extent, he, he approached me at, a, at a, com- a convention for colleges, and he goes, hey, what's your birthday? And I told him my birthday, and he goes, that's a Friday. And after about three, four seconds, I'm like, wow. I said, I got to know how to do this. But me, I'm not a calculator. I mean, I'm the furthest thing from a calculator. I mean, I'm, I'm so uneducated. I mean, I barely made it out of high school. I really mm. did. I mean, folks, I... I I think I got, I was the only one at Deerf High School in Allentown, Pennsylvania to attain an F minus one. I, I mean, I don't think anybody ever, I, I was probably the first one to ever get that. And that, that was my senior year. I had two of them, two F minus ones. And I flunked my senior year and had to go to summer school. I had to go to summer school to, uh, you know. To get ready to, get to graduate the, get the, and get, to get everything ready diploma. to roll. So yeah, it has nothing to do with that. So that being said. You know, when you do these, when you do these dates like this Mm -hmm. and and I wanted to learn this calendar, there's no way I could do it. So I started memorizing all the dates, just started memorizing them. I put a lot of time into the dates and believe it or not, as of today, I go all the way back as far as you can possibly go. One AD. I don't think, and and there's a little stumble along, along the way. As I told you, 1752, September 2nd. People went to bed in the United States on September 2nd, 1752, and when they woke up, it was September 14th because they they, they, they got rid of 11 dates in the, in the calendar to compensate for moon cycle, lunar cycles and things like that, crops in the United States. So, yeah, it's really bizarre what your mind is capable of, and I would have never, never known this. And here's the deal, folks. Didn't start doing this till the age of 49. So you don't have to be... 10, 20, you could do this at any age. Any age. I don't care how old you are to start. And I didn't start doing the medical memory, like the bones and the skeletal system, mm. the muscular system, circular system, the brain. I studied the human brain. I know more about the brain than I care to know. Didn't start that till the age of six zero. The big 60. Yes. So anybody can learn how to do this. Anybody. And I've been helping a lot of people, like especially wounded warriors mm-hmm. down at Walter Reed, Fort Belvoir, whole classes. And did some shows at Florida Hospital, helped a couple of nursing students. At Seton. Yeah, I help people with shortcuts to memory systems and, and, and different, especially bones of the body to learn the skeletal system. It's not, it's not an easy thing to learn. Oh, I so can't I, imagine. Yeah, this. so I came up with a, a shortcut system. And here's the deal, Dave. I could take, I was just telling my wife the other day, I tried it at my house. You could put on this table right now a pile of 206 bones. Mm-hmm. You know, fake bones, not real. Yeah. All right? <laughs> from the human body, from a skeleton. All right? And say, ready, go. Get a stopwatch, and I'll put the skeleton together piece by piece, not miss a piece, and name each bone by its name. It's Jeez. crazy. Where does this come from? That's, yes. you know, it's all, it's all practice, 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 practice. And as you can see, when I talk, the energy, man, it just, when we start doing video on, mm. we're, like we're going to start the first couple audio, but then we're going to add video. Yeah. The energy is beyond belief, which would you attain from this? Like, like now today I'll lift the weights and it's like, I'm like, I'm 22 years old again. I'm down to start lifting the guns and roses, Aerosmith, a lot of rock music. All of a sudden. <laughs> Where does this energy come from? And I believe it all comes from your brain, from pushing your brain to memorizing new information each and every night. So that's why I do all this stuff. 
Just... So have you so far in your journey met anyone that's close to what you do or at all? Like uh, anyone that can do the zip codes too or do the oh, pie yeah, yeah. or anything good, good, like that? Good question. Yeah, there are people that could do the zip code. I've, I've, I've met and heard of a, a postman. A lot, most of them are <laughs> postmen. <laughs> of course. Yeah, and they, they, they're, they're pretty. But now, don't forget, I'm doing the zip codes. That's like one one thousandth. Mm-hmm. What I, I mean, I got like the Constitution memorized, all the Hall of Famers, the zip codes, the pie. I, I like a goof. I was memorizing pie for a long, you know, pie three and four and five and six five three five eight nine seven nine two two three eight four six two six four two three eight three two seven. And you know, I'm not looking at anything. <laughs> I mean, I used to go out. Are you ready for this? Tens of thousands of digits <laughs> until I finally thought, hey. Who, where, where am I ever going to use this? <laughs> you know I mean, after a hundred digits, people are going to be like looking at their watch. All right, are you done yet? You know what I mean? It's, it's so crazy. So I started, I, I was, I would call that useless memory skills. I, and then I started memorizing stuff that is more like the con memorizing the constitution and memorizing the, the zip codes. And like when I perform like at a place like the United States military Academy, mm-hmm. you know, as you know, I perform for a lot of, of military, right? But when I, I'm at the military school or if I'm over in Afghanistan or Qatar or, or somewhere overseas and you got thousands of troops out there and people raise their hand, I get what you zip go, one, two, three, nine, seven. I go, you're Schenectady, New York. Ah, oh, man, it's like giving them a million dollars because you got their hometown. <laughs> oh, or, yeah. Especially when they give these little out of the whole towns like in the middle of nowhere. And, and zip codes are pretty, pretty unique because – there are some like really, really fascinating zip codes, mm. like like the Yogi Bears, uh, Smokey the Bear's zip code. I mean, not Yogi the Bear. What did I say? Yogi Bear. Smokey, <laughs> Smokey the Bear has a zip code really? down in D.C. Yeah, 20252 is Smokey the Bear. I guess years ago they gave him a zip code because people would, I don't know. So it's like, and, and you, got, you got some really cool ones. Like, and, and you got like 666, any, anything begins with 666, that's Topeka, Kansas. Hmm. That's like the, the, and then I also learned like, where's the wealthiest zip code in the United States? Where's this? Zip? So you, hmm. I educate them. See memory. I turn memory and education into knowledge. I, I don't just memorize lists. I take it now. And I like the skeletal system. Now I have 3d maps at my house and I look at it. And so it's like really cool. I mean, Hey, I'm like, as you can see, I'm like excited, like a 10 year old yeah. with this stuff. And, but I want, I want to get everybody else excited. That's what it's all about, buddy. Purely mental. This is what we're going to do. We're going to have fun. We're going to bring guests on, celebrity, all my friends that I've met over the years. I've talked to at least 40, 45 of them. They're all willing to come on. Some in person even. That would be cool. That'd right? be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then we'll have some fun from, 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 from athletes to celebrities to rock and roll to doctors. That's the most important thing because we want to get that message across. I'm just, I'm just beginning right now. This is the beginning of this. Like I said, I 63 years of practice, and now I'm ready to give it out to everybody. But we got to find, and the reason why the show is purely mental, because it's going to range from the brain and all this stuff to the wackiest minds in the world, like Jackass. Remember the movie Jackass? Oh, yeah. I happen to be in that movie, Jackass number two, all right? I was the guy that threw cars at Wee Man's butt and gave him shot. Well, these guys are front. We, get, we try to get Wee Man on one of the show. We're going to have some fun on this show. We're going to have a lot of fun on here. So purely mental, we have, it's a big, wide range, what we could do from, the, it's all about the brain, all right? Purely mental. So we're going to have a lot of fun here. Subscribe to our podcast now. It's Purely Mental with Jim Carroll, and you can get all the details at jimcarroll.com. Yeah, and Carroll is spelled K-A-R-O-L, jimcarroll.com.